Are we live? Is it live? Jaren, can you tell me if it's live? Um, okay. Uh, I think the first order of business is getting, like, like I want, like, a uh, Twitch chat, like, on my screen. Like, it's not like anyone's really going to be chatting, but I want it, like, here. Let's see, so TC, TC Connect. No modicon API found. Okay, wait, so say, say something, say something. Okay, it, it works, it works. So that's pretty sick. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm working on this project called Penguin, which is a peer to peer protocol. I started it before streaming, I guess. So there's like a bit of it done, um, but I'm gonna try to go over like most of it. Um, uh, but let's just like set up. Right, let's try clear, clear and TC connect. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Let me see if I can get the size right so it's like lining up with the, you know what I mean? There, right? Yeah, pretty sick. Okay, so. So here's, here's the idea. So we have a thing called Penguin and right now the idea is that the protocol will be transported over UDP, um, but I'm actually implementing my own transport protocol, which sits on top of UDP, um, which is, is basically just like a really shitty version of TCP. Um, you have like SYN, then you send a synac, then an ACK, and then you're connected and has sequence numbers and all that good stuff, retransmission. Um, so that's what I'm working on now. Um, so if I go into TP, which is first TP, which is like the, um, that's just where I put the transport protocol. TP is transport protocol. Actually, I'm going to open it in BIM. So TP mod. So so we have uh, basically a, a protocol laid out here. So um, the messages are pretty minimal. Um, each message has a header, which contains protocol version, which is constant to one right now. Um, uh, connection ID, which is used to like route the connections. Like when you receive a when you receive data, you route it based on the incoming IP address and the connection ID as a tuple. Um, there's a sequence number which starts as a randomly generated number, um, and then you have an ACK number, which is the um, number of the uh, most recently received packet, uh, which for which you don't have any missing packets before it. Like, say if I receive packet number four, but I haven't received packet number three, my ACK number is still going to be two because I'm still missing packet three. So if we ACK four, um, the other side would be like, oh, great, I don't have to resend three, which would suck. Um, so, so yeah, so there's that. Um, and then I just have a very basic implementation of, uh, serialization and deserialization. It's basically just packing it into, um, packing it into a byte stream with a uh, big NDN. Um, uh, so very simple and same for deserializing. And then, so there's the header and then there's the body and the body uh, is an enum which has different types for different messages. Um, currently, data being the only one that can like hold like something like that has like data following it instead of just being a like a control message basically. So it's pretty similar to TCP. You have like data ACK, sin synac um, and terminate. I think TCP uses like a bit field so that you can have like sin and ACK at the same time. We're not doing that. Trust, whatever. Coffee. Cool. And then um and we have the opcodes here. 
Um, cool. So, actually, I can go ahead and run it right now. If I have two binaries currently, um, my in server. So I can go ahead and run the server. Oops. Uh, in server. And it should listen on that port. And then I can run client. And it should. Oh, we got it not yet implemented, so it's not working, but it should try to connect to this server. Um, and it should initiate a handshake. Um, so I guess let's just start at the not implemented yet. So. Send. OK, so. So let's go over connection.rs. Um, yeah, and is, is the like font size like good? Like, should I make it smaller or bigger or like, is it even legible? Looks good. Okay, slay. Okay. Um, cool. So our connection basically holds all the state for a single connection and um. Fair warning, this code is a fucking mess. Um, it needs to be refactored, but like, yeah. Um, you gotta make it work before you make it look nice, I guess. Um, so we have the states here. So connection state, uh, the connection starts at disconnected. Um, when it uh, sends a, a sin, it, it switches to awaiting synac. So this would be, if you begin an outbound connection, you would send a sin and you would be in the awaiting synac stage uh, state. Um, and if you um, if you send a synac, you would be uh, awaiting an ack on that synac. So you're awaiting synac ack, which is like I, I don't know if that's the best way to like write it, but I mean it works, right? Um, and then once the synac is act, um, you're connected. And then if something goes wrong with the connection, like say the states are uh, not synchronized on both sides, uh, it, it'll terminate the connection, hopefully. Um, yeah, so it might be good to kind of Make a small diagram. Oops, why isn't that? That on the left side, actually. Um, cool, so let's say we have like client, client, server. Um, and let's say the client is initiating a connection to the server or something like that. Um, so the client is going to send a sin, or the client is going to say state disconnected at, at the beginning, like both are uh, disconnected, although the server hasn't created state yet. So this client is gonna send a sin um, to the server. And uh, the server is going to create state um, the client is going to change to the state of uh, awaiting synac. Um, and then the server is going to send a synac. And at that point, the server state is going to be awaiting synac ack ack. Cool. And then once the client receives that, um, it's going to move to connected, to the connected, and it's going to send to the server. And then once the server receives that, both sides are connected. Awesome. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then what will happen is the uh, 
client will send some sort of data packet, uh, sequence number of, it'll be a random number initially, and this is actually done in the TCP protocol to avoid the situation where, um, say you have a client in a server, um, and the client, or, or say the server goes down, and the, but the client doesn't know that, and the client keeps sending messages to the server, um, it's possible that you'll have sort of a, um, uh, one side will be expecting a certain sequence number and the other won't have it, but the best way to figure that out is to generate a new uh, starting sequence number each time. Um, so then you can say, hey, these sequence numbers are way off, like something looks bad, and then the server ideally should terminate the connection and they should just restart, do the whole handshake again um, to make sure that they aren't assuming anything that the other doesn't know, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, then we can say, so data, data one, um, then the server might say like act cn1 and ASCII art is really, really hard. There. The server would say act that, um, and the client would be like, okay, then it might send, uh, the server might send something, which is like sequence n1 as well. Client would have to act sequence n1 once it responds, or once it receives it. Um, and say we send data sequence n n2. Um, the server, and then we send sequence n3, four. Um, Say the server server doesn't respond uh, within act for a while, something like that. Uh, oops. Um, we're gonna start retransmitting after some set period of time. Which there's a whole way to calculate this where you can like measure the average round trip time, um, the time it like the average time it takes for one end to send data to the other, and for, sorry, for an ACK to come back, that's the round trip. And then we can base our delay times off that. But, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. Here's what I found. Okay. Um, cool, and so let's look at the way the connect connection struct is organized. So we have a state, which is just pointing to this enum. Um, we have a connection ID, um, which is shared between the two. Thanks, Jaren. Um, we have a sequence number here, which is, I believe, the sequence number of the last. Yeah, the sequence number of the last message we sent. Uh, it could be the next. It could be the next sequence number we're going to use. Actually, um, depends on implementation. Um, ACKN is um, the latest um, sequence number from the other side that we've acknowledged. And then remote ACK number is the latest, um, latest acknowledged sequence number. Um, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Latest act number we've gotten from the other side. So the other side is acknowledged up to here, right? And then from that, we can say, like, okay, everything in the in flight buffer, uh, which should be any message that we've sent, but haven't, um, haven't gotten an acknowledgement for, uh, we can resend after a certain point of time. So, uh, yeah. And then the receive buffer is basically if we, uh, basically, what it, it's it's like um, pieces of the next whole message that we're trying to piece together. So until we have acknowledged the last packet uh, in that segment or whatever, uh, our receive buffer will be uh, filled, and we can use that to um, we can fill that in with retransmits from the other side if we need to. Um, and then router handle is this. 
really terrible abstraction I wrote that allows us to basically reply to messages, right? So we have we have this concept of a router, which basically routes each message or each packet to uh, the right connection based on the IP address and the connection tuple. Uh, I'll dive into that more later. But then router handle basically just lets us reply. It lets us send messages, basically. Um, Cool, so, okay, so, all right, so an in-flight packet um, is what's in the in-flight buffer, so it's basically just a message that's paired with a timestamp, and actually it might eventually make sense to put a timestamp in the message header, TCP has a timestamp in the message header, um which helps with certain certain methods of keeping the connection alive uh, i forget exactly how it works but it, it it's it's important uh tcp also has a concept of a window size which the two share in the header which basically says like if your window size is 10 it's basically saying like you can send me a maximum of 10 messages um at a time because otherwise um, if you keep sending messages and the other side isn't acknowledging them, um, the other side might only want to be keeping a buffer of 10 messages at a time, and you might not want to go over that. Um, in our case, we're going to be using a, a, a fixed window size. Um, haven't determined what that is yet. Actually, we might be able to replace these with like... Uh, like something like that, but oh, like that, but um, yeah, not sure yet, not sure. Um, yeah, but it's fixed, and basically the assumption is that both sides are running the same code, so both sides are gonna be um, both sides are gonna be respecting each other's window size, um, because like treat others how you want to be treated, you know. So. Cool. Um, so basically, the reason why there is a not yet implemented yet to do in the send function is because previously for the send function, uh, it was just you know sending them straight over the wire, sending the message straight to the UDP connection. Now we actually want this to go into the in-flight buffer um, so that we can um, store we can um, store the message for retransmission. If we need to retransmit it later, it'll be there. And in the case that our in-flight buffer is full, um, we need to actually queue it up and uh, send it, send it when we can. Um, so that's cool. So, so I think, I think, um, I think in addition to our in-flight buffer, we might need something like a... And actually, let's decide on the window size really quick. Um, I'm just going to pull a number like out of my ass. I don't I don't know what to... I don't know what, what's like a good window size. I mean, let's just do like 16. That might be like really small in this context. Because if we're sending... Basically, the maximum size of this um, packet is is uh is uh restricted by what's called the maximum transmission unit i believe uh which is usually like 1500 bytes 100 bytes yeah um so i believe we're gonna try and keep our packets to around a thousand to 1500 bytes each so like six 16 kilobytes might be a good buffer size. We can probably go like 32. I don't know. It is what it is. So let's actually change these. Uh, to use the window size. Uh, um, and... Oops. Um, and the 
we can just do this, like none bias. Uh, that's interesting. Um, I make it clone for each, for each of these. Yeah, wait a, that's weird. How do we, how do we tell it to clone for each clone? No. Hmm. Um. Yeah, the the crab thing is cute. Um, what's it called? Like, Ferris? Um... Oh, it has to be a constant? That's really annoying. Okay, I guess we can, I guess we can do it like this, so we can say like that and then bot map. Looks like that works, that's terribly cursed. Yeah, Ferris. And then, something that's a bit kind of shitty with this API is we have two constructors one for outbound and one for um, inbound. And basically the difference with this is with inbound, we already have a connection ID coming in from the other side. Yeah, I think I've seen this. This is pretty cool. Cool. Um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so basically with outbound, uh, we're generating our connection ID first, um, randomly. And um, with inbound, we're taking in a connection ID that's already generated. Um, I believe with TCP, I think the connection IDs are like different by one on each side, like there's like basically a different uh, connection ID for the receiver and the sender. I honestly don't really know why that's the case. I'm sure there's a reason for it, um, but I think we'll just play ignorant and like not do that because I don't really want to do that right now. And if it causes problems down the line, we'll fix it. So yeah. Um, okay, so we have the in-flight buffer, and we have the receive buffer, and then I'm going to do you, and we can do a vec deck, which gives us basically first in, first out, uh, in, 
fight packets? Do we want it to be an in-fight packet before it's sent? I don't think so. I think it should just be message. Right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, Oh, back deck. Back. I can probably remove these few bugs. Okay. So actually we might need to track how many slots are taken up by the buffer? I think. Do we want to make a small like buffer implementation? I think that might be the move here. So, like, is this necessary? Is there like something I can use? Like Rust buffer. I don't really think I want to take in a, a crate. I think I'll just write my own, honestly. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll edit source slash tp slash buffer dot rs. We will open tp slash mod and do mod buffer. So I actually haven't used this feature yet, but can't we do like like constants and like like this? Like I can do a u size. Oh, expected trait const. Yeah. Sick. Uh, and this can just be. No, let's make it a make it a buff. So T and and counts. Oh no, option T. Oops, option T. And count is gonna be size. And so basically what this is gonna do is this is gonna um it's gonna be a, a fixed length array, right? That's gonna count how many slots are gonna use, we're gonna use. And basically when we insert something we put it in the first available slot and uh, then increase the count. And using the count, if count is equal to n, then we can, uh, then the buffer is full, basically. That's it. it. Doesn't really have to be its own thing, but like, whatever. I think it, I think it's nice. Oh, this is annoying because it's probably gonna probably gonna have to use that trick again. The count is gonna be zero. Does this also have to be const n u size like that? Oh, okay, interesting. Can it just be const n? No, okay, interesting. Yeah, okay, so. Allows the server to respond to a request and UDP does not. Oh. <laughs> but I don't see, because like, because like the operating system is still going to make the distinguish, this, this, still going to distinguish whether you're sending or receiving a message, right? So it's not like, like if they're both using the same connection ID, like they can both just send to that connection ID and it's still bi-directional, right? I'm not sure. Cause, cause yeah, cause like the idea of our, our library is to build on top of, oh, well, thank you. Build on top of 
3dp to ensure like delivery um, need two sockets one welcome socket and one connection socket but udp only needs one is this I think this is a different thing though. I think this is so. So I think this is like you have one socket that's like for accepting connections, and then you open a socket when you accept the connection, basically. That's basically like locked onto one address or connection. I don't think this has to do with the actual um, protocol. It doesn't mention the connection id really i mean i don't know I, I i tried like reading the rfc for tzp like i read a good chunk of it but it's like it's boring it's a lot it's a historical relic so like yeah but okay um Yeah, I suck at networking too. Like, basically, the whole reason I'm doing this is it's like an excuse to get a little bit better at that stuff. I'm still pretty bad at it, but like, honestly, the best way to learn is just to like sit down and read some RFCs and like have some coffee or like whatever. I don't know. So, the thing is, insert can fail. So, that's really annoying. So we can do so so when it fails, so basically when we insert, we're passing ownership into the into the buffer. But in the case that it fails to insert, we probably want to give it back, like give the ownership back to the caller. Um, ideally, we shouldn't be calling this without first checking if it's full. The thing is, I want to say option T, right? I mean, I guess I can, because can then, then you can just say like if count equals n item, right? Or like, oops, like some item, right? Else, yeah, you could go to TwitchCon, I guess. Honestly, I don't watch like that much Twitch. Personally, I don't know. Like, is it worth it? Like, are you going to get stuck in the ball pit or something? That's a lot. It's in Vegas. I'm not. I hate Vegas. Like, it, it feels like it feels fake like you get those like private equity like investor vibes you know like it's all built to like damn you um buff count oh and this is gonna have to take a mute self buff count uh let me see your account plus plus. Can we do this in Rust? I forget. Hmm, okay. Fair. Area 15. Isn't that... Wait, no. That's not the like meow wolf thing, is it? Wait, is that the alien one? Like, is that the, what, actually the the alien thing? No, no, it's a venue. Okay. Yeah, it's the meow wolf thing. That's where they have like the Omega Mart, right? Yeah, Area Fifty One. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. 
Yeah, that's I've always wanted to go to this. It's pretty cool. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. I think I need to like oops, do this, right? So that it doesn't like No, you're good. I can money. Okay. Cool. So, and then here we can do a little don't repeat yourself. Do that. I don't know how to enable Twitch VODs. Also, like, I want to have like the high quality recording, like, on. I mean, it, I have it set so it's like the same quality as as the stream. Here, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how this stuff works. But yeah, okay, cool. So we have we can document. So it's length array which is filled. Thank you. Um, ooh, but the thing is, we can't. We can't, um, we can't allow access to this inner type. Like we could, we could go ahead and impulse standard ops DRF or, oh, I suppose we could do DRF, just not DRF mute. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So basically, Oh, it's just uh, type target equal option. That. Thank you. Self dot buff. So basically, tests. Test function or test function it works. Um, if I say let I'm gonna use a turbo fish and let's say like do eight of let's do four U eights. You know. And insert twelve, twelve. Oops. Yeah. Then we can go like twelve, twenty four, thirty six, uh, forty eight. And we can say like assert. Buff of three is equal to sum forty eight. Right? So basically like what the deref here allows us to do is we're saying when you dereference this, um it dereferences into this type here, the option T uh with n elements. And we just say when you dereference it, it's basically calling this function and we're saying go to self.buff. And what that allows us to do is when we call buff.deref. 
we get a pointer, um, so uh, not a pointer, a reference, sorry, uh, to the inner. So it would look like uh, this. Oops. Oh, it's option, option. Anyway. That. Uh, option U8 of 4, which can also be treated as a slice like that. And that lets us basically, um, you know, access it with the uh, bracket notation. I forget what that's actually called, uh, index notation or something. But on top of that, like, it does it implicitly, right? So we can just say, like, buff um, 3. Like, we can use the access notation array index, I don't know what it's called, angle bracket thing. And it'll just be like, oh, like, well, our type can't really do that, but if we dereference it into a um, into an array, then we can do that. So it dereferences it implicitly, and it makes a super nice API. Um, and so on top of this, so we've inserted four items here, right? And so we should be able to say assert buff dot count equals four. And so our buffer is full. And so if we uh, as equals buff dot insert fifty six, uh, then we should be able to assert that res equal to sum fifty six. Oops. Um. Yeah, and okay. Um. So what I'm thinking now is the issues that this doesn't really work like a regular buffer, right? So it's like we have a certain number of things in here, and. And we kind of want, we want it so that, um, so we can insert things right now, but we can't really take things out. Um, but the issue is that we want to have it act like a vec deck, right? So we want it to be first in, first out, I believe. Yeah, so. So right now, so if we if we were to insert all these things, right? So at this point, the buffer is going to be like 12, 24, 36, 48, right? And count is equal to 4. Um, we want to be able to take out 12, right? So we want 12 to be um, empty because that's the first thing we inserted. So think think of this like, think of each of these numbers like an in-flight message. Uh, 12 would theoretically be the oldest in-flight message. And so in theory, that's the one we'd want to be resending first if we need to. Um, and also that that should be the one that would be act first. So by the other side, so we would want to take that out first, like regardless. Um, but the issue here, right, is it's like kind of a pain to do this because we insert into we insert into the next uh, available slot based on what count is. And if we were to go ahead and just remove the first element here and set count to three, when we next try to insert something, like say we want to insert like, I don't know, like, uh, the number uh, 72 I don't know so we want to insert 72 uh, it would try to insert it here right because the index would be 3 so what do we do right so like in this case um 
what we can usually do, or actually what we can always do if we are treating this as a first in, first out strictly, and we only allow popping and pushing, we don't allow like arbitrary uh, deletion, which we should be able to do in theory, um, is we should be able to define a new uh, struct field called, what's a good name for this? Like start or something like that. And it would start at zero, and basically what it would do is when we're inserting, we only start inserting at, at the um, start plus count. Um, sorry, this is a terrible explanation. Hold on. So, okay, so let, let's, let's uh, start with a blank array here. So we have uh, four slots, right? So our capacity is four. And we would start with um, start idx or start being zero and count equaling zero. So let's denote start with this vertical bar. Uh, I think that makes sense. Um, so let's say we insert. 12 and we insert 24. Uh, 12, 24. So start won't change. It'll still be pointing to the beginning of the array. And each time we'll just insert at start plus count. So it'll start with start plus zero, which would give us the index zero. Then start plus one, which would give us one. And we insert here. So at this point, start equals zero, count equals two. Now let's say we want to pop uh, from the front. We want to get 12 out, right? So what we do is we um, delete what's in, in slot zero, and we change start to one, right? So the bar is going to be here now, right? Uh, this diagram sucks. It's going to be there. We're going to have... Why is it like this? Start, start equal to 1 and count equal to 1. And basically, the next time we want to insert, we have 1, and our start is 1. So if we add 1 plus 1, we get two, which is here. Uh, and we're basically treating this array like it starts from here. Um, we don't really care about where it actually starts in memory. Um, now, what if we insert 48, right? And then we insert, we want to insert 56, right? You would think that's an issue, right? Because like start being one and count being three, would give you four, right? And that would be out of bounds. But if we do it um, mod modulo by the capacity, by the uh, n, we get zero again, actually. And so we can insert here. And um, theoretically, we have an array that starts on 24 and then goes 36, 48. But then we wrap around and go back to 56. And when we want to um, when we want to pop twenty four, we can just clear twenty four here, move start here, and the cycle continues, and we have a circular buffer. Um, so sorry, that was a terrible explanation, but I think I think it'll make sense when we implement it. So let's say start u size. And start will be zero. And so insert stays the same. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't exactly. Uh, it becomes self dot count uh, self dot start plus self dot count uh, mod n.
and that'll make sure it rolls over when it hits the end of the array. And we'll do self dot buff idx equals self item. Self dot count plus equals one. So now, and actually, I'm gonna call this push instead of insert because we're treating it like a buffer. So it's kind of like it's pushing it onto the end. Uh, so then, how pop is gonna look? Um, is if self dot count equals zero, and we could be a little OOP and like do that, I guess. Although I don't really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll return none. Otherwise, we want to go. We want to get the index. Actually, our, our index is just going to be self plus start. In fact, because um, we're just taking whatever's at the theoretical front of the array, right? So then what we can do is self.buff idx dot take. And that's a function on option where if option has a value, it'll take it out. Um, and that'll return an option t. And we can turn that. And then we can say self.start plus equals one, self.count minus equals one. And that should be it. So let's um, let's rewrite this. So if we print the buffer as debug here, it should be an empty buffer. What's going on? There we go. Um, and now if I cargo T, it works. Please just compile here. Let's, let's do that. Cool. And I think we also need to say like dash 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 show output to show like prints. Yeah, see, here we go. Here's the buffer. Uh, so you can see it's none, 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 right? With a count of zero and a start of zero. Incredible. So let's insert, or sorry, push 12, 24, 36, 48. And we'll print the buffer after each action. And then let's pop. And we can assert uh, that E should be 12, some 12. And then we should see the buffer um, without 12 and with a start of one after. Did not work. Oh, this is supposed to be if self is full, not if it's not full. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Okay. So we fill it up 12, 24, 36, 48. We take out 12. Um, and we have three starting at one. And now if we buff.push 56 um, and print buff. It should push, it shouldn't return, um, shouldn't return uh, the result back, it shouldn't reject it basically. And if we buff that pop, uh, it should pop 24 it equals. Uh, Would you look at that? So our buffer is, is amazing and perfect. And 
we should be ready to use it. Um, I'll add comments at another time. So we can go in and we can replace our buffers here with uh, uh, buffer and uh, have to buffer. We have to use it. There we go. Buffer, you know. Buffer, you know. Buffer new, buffer new. Awesome. In theory, we could replace our queue with a buffer too but then it would have a finite size. So I think it needs to be infinite because basically, yeah, because like the expectation is that we can just keep sending things to the uh, to the connection and it, it should eventually go through. So I think the queue needs to be a dynamic array. It needs to be infinite like it is here. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to send. And um, the first thing that happens is if self dot in flight buffer is full, self dot q dot push push back uh, message, and we return. Otherwise, okay. otherwise, all this, right? Okay. Otherwise, we're going to create an in flight packet with a default resend delay of one second. Might be a bit short. And I don't know why we need to, we don't need to clone the message, I don't believe. But we're going to. Push into the buffer packet and we should be able to assert that output is not like it should be, it, it should go into the buffer, it shouldn't be rejected. Really? Um, great, 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 great. So in this case, we should be good to send it off. So how we actually send it is we do router handle dot send message. And I hate this abstraction, but it's what we've got so far. Uh, and it is async. I think we need to introduce a bound. Uh, I see, I see. So it it does need to be cloned, which is unfortunate. Theoretically, we could use like an arc here. Um, in fact, I'm not sure why this can't just take uh, a reference. Okay, it totally could. That's crazy. So we'll have that take a reference. We'll do we'll send it first and then we'll put it into the in-play packet buffer. Okay. There. Boom. Okay, cool. Um and in the case that we fail to send the message. Do we want it in the in-flight buffer? Suppose we just 
For now, we'll just call that an error. That's like a fatal, basically. Um, that's not, well, it's an IO error, really, so. I think one of the to-dos here is to sort of better distinguish between what's like a system error and what's a user error. So basically, like, a user error would be like, our server sends us invalid data, right? Like, that's an error, but like, our program is still functioning correctly. Um, like, it's not our fault that there's an error. So it should be treated differently than like, if we have an IO error, like a pipe breaks or something while we're trying to send a message or something. So that's something to work on. And right now I'm just using IO result because it's like easy. But we could make our own like result type, like error type in the future. We could use like anyhow whatever okay um okay we've got a spam bot in chat our first spam bot so mods um mods dox them and send in the nuke Um, and actually something I probably should have talked about earlier is that, and actually I'm going to close this diagram. Um, when we first spawn the connection, this is almost like a throwback to the go days because how it works is we have a loop here where, uh, and in each connection has a channel, like a Tokyo, like unbounded channel that it can receive from, receive messages from. And it also has a tick, which is basically like, you know, something that gets called every so on or every so often. And uh, that's when we basically check if we're due to retransmit any messages. Like if we have a message that was supposed to be retransmitted in a second, after a second, we should tick and then um, retransmit it. Um, I need to sneeze one sec. Okay. Um, so we'll have a tick function and basically the responsibility of this tick function is to check if any messages need to be retransmitted. If so, retransmit them, right? And also, it's also going to, um, if any messages are retransmitted, clearing up a full or if space is made on the in-flight buffer, on the previously full in-flight buffer, uh, attempt to send messages in the queue. So basically, like, if our in-flight buffer is full and we have messages that are in the queue ready to be sent, and we... Actually, sorry, this doesn't happen on tick because we don't actually clear the in-flight buffer on, on tick. Um, since we haven't actually received an ACK yet. So this doesn't happen yet. But once we clear a message from the in-flight buffer, like once it's ACKed, basically, um, we can send more messages from the queue. It's like a throttle, basically, like a, a, a bottleneck. Or it's... So, yeah. Let's say. Um, um, cool. So, so basically in the case that we receive a message, um, we have established connection. Oh, this is a special type, which says like, send us in to our, let me use this. No, um, send us in to the server we're trying to connect to. And this is only called once on a new outbound connection. Otherwise, we'll generally be receiving message received here. And honestly, I'm not sure why this is an option. It really shouldn't be an option. 
Oh, when we send none, that means, or when we receive none, that means the channel is closed, and then we exit the loop. Basically, the connection being killed. Crazy. So... Okay. Um, so when we receive a message, we handle it with this handle message function. And it has kind of a shitty type signature, which I'll probably want to change in the future, but it returns a result containing a bool. And if that bool is true, it means like terminate the connection. And so if after handling a message, we've determined that we want to terminate the connection, we break the loop and, and kill, kill the connection, basically, like it's gone. And otherwise, we just continue as normal. If there's an error, handling that error is a two. I, I don't know what to do. It's like an async loop in a separate thread. I don't know. So let's work on tick. So in-flight buffer. So. So we are going to, it might be nice to kind of implement iterator for the buffer too. Although, we already have an iter, but it's over option to use, which is kind of stupid. I mean, we can do a dot. Oh, for I always forget how this works for in. Buffers line iterator dot filter map. Is there a way to do filter map without like doing this? But not cloned, it's like as ref, right? I want to do that. Like I think we should implement. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna implement. I'm gonna implement. Uh, that equals T. It's. Oh, and actually, you know what? We need to be really careful. Uh, I don't. I don't think we can let the user access access the buffer directly because. Because they, they won't be using the start offset. So, so yeah, we, we can't even, like, we can't let them dereference it. But that's no longer allowed. So, next. Uh, we're going to have to do, like, a stateful iterator, I think. So we need to implement into iterator, I think, not iterator. Like that, and then do function into iter. Or what's the one that's fun just function iter? I'll 
let's up off that hitter. Is that just part of... So just part of the easy way to do this. Shitter. Is it as iterator? Oh. Off that iter. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, it's just part of the the interface. Okay. Cool. So here's what we'll do. We will oh, function iter. Oh. Simple iterator. Item equals reference to T, and we will do standard iter um, function, and it will be a capturing function, and we'll say we will say let. x idx equals zero and that will be mutable so then we will return we'll say let el equals self dot buffer self dot start plus next idx and then we'll say next idx plus equals one say el that beautiful and let me fuse it yeah uh, and basically what fuse does i'm not certain if this is necessary but what fuse does basically is is after it, it like wraps an iterator and after the first time that iterator returns none it just keeps returning none so like say we call our iterator until it calls none until it returns none, then we keep calling it. We're gonna keep accessing this array and we're gonna keep incrementing next index. If we do fuse, basically once we hit none, it's gonna stop calling this function and just return none. So theoretically, there could be some performance improvements there, but there could also be some performance uh, disadvantages to it. So like I don't know, whatever. We can do optimization later. But now what we can do is we can just use iter like this. And it's so much easier. And now we're not going to have to deal with any option T's, only references to in-flight packets. And so let's get what now is. So standard time, standard instant. No, standard time, sorry. Do we have time? Namespaced, we do. Instant. And then, actually, I think we can just say elapse equals slot dot. Slot as an in. Timestamp. What, what is, what? Send that. Okay, whatever. Send that. At dot elapsed. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's much better. We don't even have to do that then. Um, and so we can say if elapsed is greater than or equal to slot dot delay, we're going to send it again. But actually, this time we don't want to use our 
our send function annoyingly because that would create another in-flight packet. So we actually, what we want to do is, and here it is, we just want to send it like straight through the wire. But also what we want to do is we want slot boxes. I don't know. Uh, we might want this bound like in the impl. Cause like it's kind of annoying like doing this. Also, are we gonna get issues without using sync and send? Guess not. I thought it would give us a compilation issue, but we're we're fine, we're chilling. Yeah. How long have we been going? An hour nineteen, so we're doing good, we're doing good. Hopefully not too many like dropped frames. We're chilling. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um. Great. And our audio isn't PK, right? I can turn it down a little bit even. We send the message. And what we're going to do is set. Ooh, we need it mutable. OK, we need. We need a mutable iterator, actually, because we're going to mutate. Um, we're going to mutate it and we're going to change the sent at and we're going to change the delay. So that's that's the issue as as ref as mute. Bar of self flop buff. Oops. Like that. Captured variable cannot escape function mute closure body. Mute closures only have access to their captured variables while they're executing. We might not be able to use a closure. Oh God, please just, come on. That's pointer. How do I? Oh, I have to do like P as mute T, right? I could have done that the whole time. Okay, but then we got to do the like the safety thing, right? So we have to say like safety. Um, so the safety is that since Oh shit, you know what? This actually would just go on forever if our buffer is full. Because, because of the way we implemented get mute. See, th this is why you can't always, this is why you want to avoid unsafe because like this isn't safe yet. It's not safe yet. Imagine we are using a circular buffer and we are starting at index zero and we're going up, 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 right? We wrap around, right? If we get too high, if we go above N, we wrap around and um, then we'd be getting the same thing again. So if I is greater than N, Greater than or equal to n, we need to return none here, because since since we're using a modulo here, 
uh, it, it's never going to be out of bounds. But now that we fixed it, it's safe. In theory. So let's add our safety comment. We using next ix and get uh, yeah, next idx in incrementing next ix by one each on each call. Next ensures that we never return the same slot twice. Therefore, the references can be valid for header. That was a fucking ride. I, I would probably cut that out. That was that was kind of a, a, a small bay moment, to be honest. So actually, I'm going to take a quick break because like my nose is really congested and I'm going to get some antihistamines. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Back. Uh, okay. Um, audio's coming through, right? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, if... So... Now we can finally use our iterator. Isn't that crazy? So... If elapsed is more than or equal to slot delay, we're going to send the message again. We are going to uh, multiply the delay by two, and we can just do that. I think we don't need to do like multiply. Oh, awesome! We can just do that. Okay. Um, and slot dot send that is going to be time instant now, right? I don't know. So this way, uh, it won't immediately just send it again, and it'll, um, you know. It'll sort of be like an exponential back off. I don't know if that's like technically what it is. Like, I don't know if it's the same concept, but yeah. So, cool. Okay, so we sent it. We did the exponential back off. I think that's all we need to do in the tick function, really. Um, we also need to handle X. Actually, let's just see if uh, if we can get a handshake running now. Uh, is the code good? Good. So let's start the server. Sorry. And let's start the client. And would you look at that? But I'm not sure. Why does it keep going? Let's take a look. Client listening. New outbound. So we received established connection. Okay, so we're changing to awaiting SYNAC. We're sending SYN. We received SYNAC. Why are we awaiting? So is there something weird going on when we handle a synapse? I'm listening to copyrighted music in the background, so I hope that's not passing through. But if it is, that's why there will be no pod, I guess. Okay. 
So, if we're awaiting a snack. We send back. So we sent, okay, sorry. So we sent sin. We're waiting, Sinak. We send us in. Connection table miss. So that's good. So we create a new connection. We change the state to waiting, Sinak. Ak. We send. Oops, we receive Sinak. And why when we receive Sinak are we hmm. the point that we receive the Sinak, we're Sinak, Sinak. We we'll go here. We're awaiting Sinak. And we send an ack. Then we change to connect it. Why? Oh, it. I think we need a. Oh, it's because of our. Um... It's because of our. The thing we just implemented. It's the tick is the the delay is like nothing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make the delay like 10 seconds. So basically we weren't clearing anything from the in-flight buffer, and so it was just like either side was just like resending everything like a ton of times, and it was just completely it was like confusing. So let's clear, let's cargo run. Let's run the server. was from the client there we go isn't that cool so okay uh i want to clean up the debug a bit because it looks like shit <laughs> like let's just be honest it looks like shit um so let's just honestly find every point at which we are printing something and just remove it for now. It's not really that helpful. Cool. And so now if I run it, it should basically say nothing. Except it isn't saying nothing. Because we still have a bunch of a bunch of stuff. <laughs> right? So Let's get rid of that. Uh, we can leave. Creating new inbound connection. That's fine. Uh. This I okay, so info don't really care, don't really care. Listening at yeah, we can do that, whatever. So server client creating new inbound connection, seek and where is that coming from? Somewhere we're printing that. 
get get out like n no more sorry i'm like like my allergies are going crazy right now i have no idea why okay Welcome back, Bestie. Um, I was like, I don't know if you were watching, I was like struggling with this one error for straight up like 30 to 45 minutes. And I like just figured it out. So I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, okay, uh, got a bit distracted. We're working on making the output less disgusting. I also wonder if I can make cargo kind of be quiet. Silent? Is there like a silent mode or like a... Silent or like uh, lens. I go run silent. I work in my own code inside of my laptop. Nice. Quiet. Dash dash quiet. It's not very quiet. It's still printing all the warnings. So warnings. I don't want it to be verbose. No warnings. Press warnings. Oh, it prints the standard error, so I could just... That works. That kind of sucks, but... Okay. Let's clear, let's clear. I just have one monitor, like I don't even have a second monitor. Like, I don't know. I feel like I'd get very distracted or just end up just like looking at one at a time, you know what I mean? Like. Like, I feel like I'd eventually just, like, like all the, if I had three monitors, like, I'd just be looking at one and the other two would just be, like, nothing or just, like, random tabs or some shit. I mean, I guess that counts. I don't know. Are you using, like, Sidecar? Like, the iPad thing? I mean, you don't have a Mac, right? So. Okay, that looks better. But now, like, you can't tell that anything's happening. So it's kind of shitty. So for connection. This, so the thing is, I want, I want to print something each time the state changes. And so I could say like state changing to whatever, right? But it might be better to just make a function called like self.change state or self.set state or something. Even though that's a bit like silly. But Rust would just inline it. So I think it's okay. So let's do that. So. Okay, so we'll do that and then we'll say something like state, 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 state changed, state change, new. 
self.state new state. These don't implement display. So actually I want to clear also before I run these. Oh, well, we didn't use the function yet. So. Why don't you just use GitHub? Or like, do you mean like, like literally like real time syncing? Because like, I kind of used to do that using iCloud Drive when I used to have like a separate laptop and desktop. But when I started college, I just like got rid of my desktop and I just at home, I just dock my laptop. Like I just plug in one dock and it plugs in my like keyboard, mouse, headphones, monitor. Like it's fucking crazy like what Thunderbolt can do. So I don't even like notice I'm not using a desktop, but I like I have all my files and stuff with me like. I just have one computer, like simplified. I'm a minimalist. Something. Okay, so we need to find every instance of self dot state equals. I could try to do some sort of regex. I always forget how. the Vim regexes work. How do we do a capture group? Okay, matches zero. Oh, okay, matches one or more. Okay. And I probably want to do like a N to M. At most M. Okay, quantifier. Any character except new line. Can I just exclude one character? Like, can I do the... Like, it can be like this, right? Oh, sick, okay. And then how do I make that a group? Group. Grouping and back references. Full match pattern, the match pattern. Ooh, okay. And then do slash one. Oh, it, it's matching the. So, do we have any self dot state equals? Okay, we don't. You just need to do self.state equals new state. That was a learning moment for me. I feel like I'm too lazy to like actually learn the features in my editor. I probably would have used a macro like normally. Oh, there's a there's an error. That's why it's all quiet. Okay. Oh, we forgot, we forgot to put the semicolon back. Uh. 
Gas. Okay, that's better. I wonder if I can make this output like a little bit more. I really like how. Like, I, I, let's just hide the. So yeah, regex is really difficult sometimes, because like, I don't know. How do I format this? On that, timestamp, time, uh, format. So we have, so our bin kind of looks like, in slash client kind of looks like this and we have tracing subscriber fmt is there any methods we can call on this not really i'm stem provider I see FMT colon format do FMT event format FMT dot event format in it they let racing subscriber format without time. That should work. And I'm going to copy that into bin slash server. Let's fucking go. Greatest programmer that ever lived. Cheers. We're going for two hours. Yeah. So it's getting very purple in here with the daylight going away. So. Is it less purple now? Yeah, okay, that's better. Okay. So we have state changes. I kind of want to make it so the message looks a little bit more compact. So let's go TP mod message and let's actually implement display or sorry standard format display for message FMT. so we're gonna write F, uh, I mean, honestly, is the default representation that bad? Let me see. And the little message. Let's do some sort of symbol.
got like a cue to show that it's like queued. That's... It's like okay, I mean... We get like a... Honestly, I kind of want to just hide the... The uh... Without... With source location false. It didn't. With target, what's a target? Whatever. I think we're okay. I might do like, I do a new line. Oops, that's a client. I mean, that's a little better. It, like, it is what it is. I don't know. And can you do like this? Yeah, then that'll like. That'll make it more like formatted, right? Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's remove the T now. Uh, That's fine. I mean, that takes up more of like a bunch of vertical space, but like, I just want it to be like easy to read. Okay, so let's pause it now that it's connected. Let's take a look. So, and actually, if we like kind of, we can kind of stagger it even. So it looks like it's like that. So, First, we send out our sin. And we're receiving it on this end. We're sending out a snack. Receiving it. Sending an ack with that. That thing. Okay, and... Acts don't need to be act themselves. So do act packets have a sequence number? In TCP.
Yeah, like, yeah, we don't need to act acts. Like, that's stupid. I have a send act function. We receive a send act and we send an act. Next message. Think. So sin, like sin is the only time when we don't want to send like an act message. Like otherwise we want to send, no, we don't want to act acts. So maybe we have handle message as like a, uh, Okay, one sec, one sec. I mean, no, not really, not really, not really. I think we're good because we don't really need to. The only message we really need to act is a data message, I think. I don't think we need to act anything else. And I don't think. Right? Because, like, will we act sin act? Okay. Ugh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so... Yeah, we're doing everything right here. So when we're acting Synac... The only thing we're doing wrong is we're sending an act with a with a uh, with a with a new sequence number. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be sending the previous sequence number. I believe. So. Okay, so so let's say self that send act. We'll copy this actually, and we'll make a function called set act. Send act. Uh, and we will. We have to kind of deconstruct this because we don't want to increment the. We don't want to increment the sequence number. Is the issue body message body back. Uh, uh. Smash types.
Where are we missing a comma? Is this code like good? Like is it formatting? Yeah, okay. You can't. Okay. So I think in that case we're good. It like we're gonna be connected, connected, and we act that we receive the synac and we act. Act yes. And we sent this act correctly. Right, this just mm, this just needs to be negative one because this is our next sequence number. That kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. Wait, honestly. Yeah. Let's do that instead. I don't. So now we're acting with. The same sequence number we previously sent. Fantastic. So now we're both like up to speed. Act. This needs to be solved by sequence number on minus one. And now they should still connect. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, we're connected. That's fucking amazing. So oh, what's next? Oh, we need to go into remote act and We need 
This is gonna have to be async, actually. Because it might have side effects. And it also might fail. Because this might result in the sending of messages from the queue. Yeah, I think that's I think it's appropriate to do it here. So Ooh, it's gonna be hard because we want We actually need an accessor or, or like a peak method too. I just fucked up. Let message in flight message equals self dot in flight buffer dot peak. Uh, if let some. Oh, we can do a while. While let some. Um, if in flight message dot message dot sequ header dot sequence number less than equal to self dot remote ac ac n uh, self dot in flight buffer dot pop else break so. So basically, basically what's going to happen is we receive an ACK from the other side. They say we're going to ACK up to this point. Like, say they're going to ACK up to 10, right? So their ACK, the new remote ACK N is 10. We're going to go through, uh, starting at the least recently sent in flight message and we're going to say is the sequence number less than or equal to 10 if it is we pop it uh it's no longer in flight we can guarantee that that the other client has sent it or has received it sorry otherwise we stop but basically we're just um clearing out all the messages that are act and yeah and then we can say if self dot in flight buffer dot if it's no longer full actually while it's no longer full we can take a message out of the queue pop back If let some 
message equals pop back. If there's something in the queue, we're going to send it. Otherwise, we're going to break. We're going to self.send message. Of course, we need guarantee transport. So that should work. Theory should work. Cool. So I think for Synac. Synac should clear the should clear the thing as well. Should go like that. Actually, it should be here. It shouldn't matter what the state is. Because if we uh oh shit. Okay, thanks. Here, it should be like this. Actually, I'm gonna rename remote act to handle remote act. I feel like that's just a bit more clear. Remote act, actually. And I feel like maybe we might replace the term remote with like something else. For now, I feel like it's okay. Beautiful. So I think, I think that covers the handshake uh, w without like timeouts. We should probably have some sort of timeout. And we also need some sort of heartbeat for like a ping, you know. And I'm getting kind of sleepy. I gotta be to be honest. And my command key is not working anymore. True, true. Forgot how to change the Odd key keyboard, hold on. Okay, it's like there we go. Cool, cool. So how do we want I don't know how we want like data to work, I guess.
So for sending. Oh no, we're good with sending. Oh, let's fucking go. What did you write? What did you code? A band sync Discord bot. Do you remember like MC bands? Like that thing that like had a database of like like oh this person's a griefer or whatever. But it was kinda like corrupt. Like, like I'm over. I Data offset. See, like, do we... Do we need, like... Stuff. Well, maybe eventually it would be good to have checksums. For corruption detection. Do we need, like... Data offset? Like, can we just... This is the size of the TCP header in 32-bit words. Why are we specifying, spe specifying the size of the TCP? Offset from the start of the TCP segment to the actual. Oh, okay. So this is like if we're adding extra shit. We're doing it our own way. So we're going to have a box. So received buffer, maybe received packet, receives that. It has to be pretty simple. Why are we moving out of message body? Where are we doing that? Oh, here. All right. If we honestly, I think it's time for a pee break. I have to pee. I'll be right back.
Okay. We are so fucking back. We are so fucking back. Let's go. Um, I got more water. Mike's unmuted, right? Yeah, sick. Okay. The lighting is awful now. Okay. So I think the thing I was thinking about is like... Is there a possibility for deadlock? Like, is there a point where one side's... Both sides have their in-flight buffers filled. Theoretically, yes. So, if we end up in deadlock for too long, or like, if we're not getting an act for too long, I, I suppose we just terminate the connection. Does the window include acts? I think it does. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, okay. I, th I think we'll just go ahead and, like, you know, fuck around a little bit. Okay, here, here's what's going to happen. We are going to.
Yeah, we need to put the Uh, message into the receive buffer provided. Okay, so so the message seek header should be. Self, okay, so self that act and this one else shit. And self that act and has to be greater than zero. Yeah, all that. Otherwise, we handle the message. Oh, there's a lot to think about. So when we receive a message, if it's the message we're expected to receive, which would be ACK and ACK and plus one. The yeah, n plus one. We can just process it and acknowledge it. If it's anything else, or if it's like at n plus two, we have to put it into the received buffer. And then we have to hope. We have to hope that we receive one uh, at n plus one next, and then we have to piece it back together. <sighs> I think. Yeah, X. X would be exempt from. From the in flight, in flight buffer and received buffer because we don't act and act. So why would we put why would we put an act in an in flight buffer waiting for it to get act when it's not going to get act? It's a act itself, right? So so said act should not do this, right? Like, it should just send the message directly. We like shouldn't keep acting. That's stupid. Cool. That makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. Likewise, acts that we receive shouldn't go into the receive buffer. So, uh, this is kind of going to be shitty. Message body act. I mean, really, the only thing we need to do this for is data, right? Like, I don't. Maybe end and terminate? Probably end, probably end, yeah. But for now, let's just. 
let's just do it for Just do it for um data. Sorry. Oh, I lost it. Okay. If more than uh self dot act n plus one. Right, so in, in this case, so if self, right, so, so if yes, we can match self dot state, we have to be connected. Connected. Uh, anything else? I suppose we can ignore it. That might have to be error later. Idea terminate. Okay. I want to do that. Wait, okay, wait. Do you pack it? <sighs> we will come back and try to remove this clone later. Okay, so why is handle message only getting a? Why is handle message only getting a? A, a reference? Why can't it? It can own it, own it, right? Like, yeah, that should be fine. And let's and if out dot is some that's an error and we should terminate it. Self dot terminate. Oh wait. And we should also not fatal, but error. Tracing. Mm. Error. Sender. Remote. Client. Violated window size, terminating connection, the RCV buffer is full, running the flow. Cool. So they shouldn't, in theory, they should be respecting the window size, which means they shouldn't be sending us more than what RCVD buffer can hold. But like, obviously, if they do, like, we got to, you know, run it. Um, and actually we can just do that here. RCBD buffer. This full. And we can just return.
it just became true, right? So I'm true. Or sorry, okay, true, right? No, we do have to terminate it ourselves. Okay, so this that kind of sucks, but there. Okay. Um Did OBS crash? No, I think we're good. Thank you. Okay, is mine. Otherwise, self to act and equals message dot header dot sequence number self dot set act. Oh, wait. Beautiful. But we also have to see here. We can reconstruct that message. Also, using a using a FIFO buffer might not be the best idea here because we might have to move some stuff around. If we might want to make some sort of like, how would this work? We're not going to deal with it for now. Also, we're going to actually send this data back to the router. So that's going to be, because I don't know how this is going to, how this is going to, So router and router dot handle input. So this is eventually gonna give us data. This is really weird. I I'm tired. I think I think that's enough for today. I think we're we're chilling. Um yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But like like I feel like at this point, like like I'm not saying anything. I'm just like 
staring at the code and like trying to get an idea and like I'm getting messy. It's like dark out. Um and there's quite a lot of work in the next next step because we've got our like so like the handling the way the the way the connection handles messages is async, right? So it's not like in this handle in I was thinking in this handle input, we can just say like if there's data, return it, right? But handle input doesn't block on the connection. It just it just Yeah, it just sends it to the to through a channel. It doesn't block. And so we need some sort of way to send data back to the router and for it to say like, oh, you got data. Which is kind of a pain. And then eventually like the abstraction, we want it to look like TCP, right? Like it should look like connection dot accept and then you know, all that stuff. That's kind of a lot of work. So tomorrow, I think tomorrow we can continue. I'm tired. I'm hungry. But like, yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here. It's Jared, I think. It was fun. It was a good way to be a little more productive than usual. But yeah, later. Bye.